Hello. I have a book to talk about. I learned about this book because I listened to the Ralph Nader Radio Hour. There's this guy, Ralph Nader, who's been involved in uh, the country for many, many years. He's 90 years old. And uh, he started writing a book called Unsafe at Any Speed when he was quite young. This is in the early 60s. And it was about a Corvair, a car called the Corvair, put out by General Motors that was unsafe because it had its motor in the back and it was easy to die in it. So anyway, he's gone on from that to uh, do a lot of public citizen things, consumer affairs, so on and so forth. Ran for president uh, a couple of times. I voted for him. Uh, he didn't win. Uh, so anyway, I listened to his show called the Ralph Nader Radio Hour which is on every week and can be accessed through your internet and your substacky and your other things like that. And a few weeks ago, he had uh, someone from the uh, veterans of the Liberty, USS Liberty on to talk about the issues of the sinking of the uh, USS Liberty in, uh, on June 8, 1967. So I got interested in that and I thought I'd read the book about it. So I looked into my library and got this book, which came out, what, in uh, 2013 or something like that? 20, 20, uh, 20, let's just wait a moment, okay? Talk, talk amongst yourself for a moment there. Uh, it came out in um, 2018. Um, it's called Blood in the Water, how the U.S. and Israel conspired to ambush the USA, USS Liberty by Joan Mellon. So what we have here is a book about this uh, incident that happened during the Six-Day War. This is right exactly at the time of the Six-Day War in 1967. Anything I read about the Six Day War, including uh, the book by uh, the general's son, uh, who was the son of a, of a general in the uh, Israeli army, uh, which is a book I read a few back. You know, he talks about the Six Day War as being really kind of a phony thing, which was over quickly and and a lot of people mention it in, in this book too as basically a land grab by Israel. And this is the point uh, in 1967, which was a long time ago, uh, when uh, Israel, after this war, annexed all this area, all this Palestinian area. Uh, including, um, you know, the Gaza Strip and um, the West Bank. And, you know, I don't know what they were in the, not in con control of Israel before that point, but after that point, they were in the control of Israel. And so all this time, they've been uh, controlling these people and the lives of these people and uh, all the things that have gone on since. Um, but whatever, this book focuses on the, these events in 1967. And what happened then is that, uh, according to the book, um, there was this CIA guy called uh, James Jesus Engleton, which you read about a lot when you ever look into any of the CIA stuff. He was, he was, uh, uh, quite a force within the CIA and apparently, you know, kind of just did shit on his own. And one of the things he did on his own was uh, with him and um, another uh, Israeli Mossad guy uh, came up with this, with this plan to uh, basically uh, have Israel attack this ship um, that uh, the USS Liberty was moved from all over, you know, from down in Africa, some down by Madagascar, I think, 
uh, right before all this happened, right up into the Caribbean, uh, into the uh, uh, Mediterranean Sea, and right outside of Israel and Egypt. Um, and the point of this was to get this is a, this was a spy ship. It had basically a couple of machine guns and that 50 caliber machine guns mounted on it and that that was all the firepower like it couldn't fire on anything at shore it didn't really have a you know surface to air thing for for combating uh, you know aerial assault or anything like that so it was you know it was it was uh, uh, for gathering information had these all these antennas including this this moon thing which uh, somehow reflected the uh, data off the moon or something. Um, so what went on was this uh, ship was positioned in this place and um, is Israel attacked it with uh, fighter jets. Um, and they uh, were shooting at it with these fighter, with these rockets that are in the fighter jets and the machine guns and uh, killed, ended up killing uh, 34 of the sailors on board and wounding like, uh, I don't know, 114 others, 214 others. Um, and um, the idea was to blame this on Egypt and then at the same time uh, use it as a pretext to uh, bomb Cairo. So, you know, already in the Six-Day War, Israel wiped out uh, uh, um, Nasser's, uh, Egypt's air force right away. Like, just, so the end of that. So that was, that was basically the end of the war right there. And, uh, and it was a war of, reg of aggression on the, on the, the side of, of Israel. Uh, and doing the, the bidding of, of uh, what Israel wanted and what uh, the USA wanted, both of which wanted to get rid of, um, of uh, Nasser, who was not being as controllable as we would like our allies to be. He was, he was in the position of being non-aligned and maybe more socialistic and all that, and you know that the United States cannot stand for any of this, cannot stand for any nation being non-aligned. You have to be with us or against us. I mean, this is what's going on right now in uh, Ukraine, where you know they, they had a deal all set up for, the, for Ukraine to be non-aligned in, uh, in March of 2022. And uh, the United States stepped, and Britain stepped in and said, no, no, you can't, do, you can't take this deal. And so there's been this war and all these people killed ever since uh, because they wanted to weaken um, Putin, which has only done the opposite. So, so uh, and put all these nations together and now uh, USA is losing the petrodollar and everything is going to collapse for the USA and Israel because of, uh, uh, and, and Israel too, yeah, because of what's going on there. So. So, uh, President Johnson knew about this. President Johnson and McNamara also knew that what was going on here. And, uh, you know, they claimed that um, in the book, she claims that, that part of the plan was uh, after this thing was executed and the boat, boat was sank, and it was blamed on um, Egypt that uh, American planes would then bomb uh, Cairo and bomb Cairo carrying nuclear weapons. So the, uh, the uh, actual planes took off from aircraft carriers in the uh, Mediterranean and headed toward uh, Cairo only to be turned back uh, like seven minutes before hitting the target. So. You know, once again, this is one of these times where this sort of brinksmanship of the USA and, uh, you know, at the behest of Israel um, was going to uh, lead us right into World War III. And, you know, we, I wouldn't be here now. So this is another, I, I'm, I'm amazed that uh, we actually survived the 20th century. 
with all this stuff that went on with these uh, maniacs that, that run things. Um, so that is basically the story of the book. It, the book itself, uh, it it's, uh, might be a little long. There's a lot of notes here. There's like 100 pages of notes here at the end. So it's, it's only, uh, what, 348 pages. I know exactly how many pages. 348. And a lot of it is a, a bit repetitious, even within a page where she'll tell us something and then tell us the same thing again, which is, you know, not necessary because I, I heard it the first time. So, uh, so in, that, in that sense, the book is slightly exasperating, but she does tell the whole story uh, from this point of view and as a lots of the illustrations and, you know, interviews with the people involved. Um, the sailors, um, so the, the, sh the book actually picks up like, you know, a couple hundred pages in where she goes minute by minute with what exactly is, has gone on here, uh, has been going on with the, uh, with the bombing. She tells us minute by minute, first, first there's uh, first early in the morning, some planes fly, and it's a beautiful day. So there's no excuses. You can't see the American flag flying. So first there's these uh, uh, big planes that fly over and then the jets come and start hitting it. And this goes on and the attacks went on for a couple hours, including a submarine that came and shot torpedoes at it and hit the ship and made like a 40 foot hole, uh, a wide hole in the, uh, in the hull. And, you know, it was only diligent work by an engineer and so forth that shored up that hole and they saved the ship from from uh, sinking which was what the intention was for the ship to sink all hands on board dead and then then uh, so it was you know essentially this false flag thing and you know it's just like so if you're going to do false flag stuff like that, you know, all, that, all those years ago, um, and this is right on uh, the head of the, head of the, the other fake thing, the go Gulf of Tonkin uh, thing in Vietnam, where uh, the same thing went on. This is the same as the, the battleship Maine that brought us into the Spanish-American War, where this ship in the, in Fanta Harbor, the Maine, was blown up or blown up, the boiler blew up or something. And it was blamed on the Spanish, and so we had to have a war. So, uh, you know, th it's always the same thing, and, and the, the, all these things are used ultimately to forward the, the imperialistic angle. So all the, any, you know, if you're a terrorist, please stop, okay? Because uh, you're only going to feed the uh, the other side. Uh, you're going to feed, uh, you know, the war machine. I mean, look what happened after 9/11. Uh, after 9/11, which is once again suspicious as a false flag operation, as as a phony operation to blame someone else. Uh, you know, uh, the United States w proceeded to, you know, murder a million innocent people in uh, Afghanistan and um, in. Uh, in Iraq, so uh, and then from on there they they went on to Libya and, and uh, you know got rid of another guy that was not being aligned with the United States in just the precisely right way. Uh, you know this this uh, our culture and our military and intelligence culture is is just uh, dangerous uh, for for the world and for us, and I think they're going to end up taking us out just because they. They can't give up, so uh, so yeah. The, so the, the the boat was attacked. Uh, they they finally uh, you know they they uh, any sort of signaling thing was hit right away. So so in hopes of making so they couldn't send out an SOS. And but they managed to do that. They, the people on the the sailors and some of the people who did work for intelligence and so forth were were smart enough to uh, hook up something and did send down an SOS. And uh, rescue planes, rescues were, were sent and called back like one or two times as, as if, uh, you know, because somebody sent the rescue and then Johnson, 
President Johnson called them back. Oh, no, 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 because the plan was for them to sink and be gone and then, uh, you know, to, to uh, cause these wars to happen and uh, give the military industrial complex, you know, what it needed and what it wanted. Uh, so it's all just, you know, a horrible and tragic story. And, uh, you know, this is where this is where the occupation of uh, of Palestine and the West Bank started. And, uh, you know, it's really worthwhile to look into the uh, uh, right now to look into the liberty because, you know, this, this kind of shit goes on. I mean, you know, we hear how uh, locked down and how great the the uh, Mossad is and all the the, the uh, all the um, surveillance that, the, that the, they are capable of doing and yet we're supposed to buy that these terrorists uh, got over the fence and, and uh, captured these hostages and killed these people and so forth and they didn't know it uh, you know I think uh, you know the, I'm, I'm sorry but I'm a little suspicious that they just didn't let it happen at least you know and uh, like so they could have their 9-11, have their Holocaust, and then proceed to do their Holocaust. So uh, the Israeli experiment is uh, not working out all that great. I mean, the, uh, is, uh, the Zionist experiment. So I guess that's what I have to say about uh, blood in the water. And... Uh, I like the book. My YouTube channel isn't getting any views anyway, so it doesn't matter what I say. So, um, you know, like and subscribe if you want. And, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll put the uh, Ralph Nader Radio Hour uh, link so you can listen to the, the uh, interview there and uh, more talk about this, uh, this horrible situation and how they... Uh, you know, to this day, keep lying about it, and you know, every president since has been asked to uh, to uh, bring it to bring it uh, to the fore and do a real investigation, and they refuse to do so. You know, because well, uh, APAC. Uh, uh, oh, also is a detail in here is I, um, you know, John F. Kennedy. Right around the time that John F. Kennedy was killed was exactly the time that uh, that Israel was uh, stealing uh, this enriched uranium and uh, making its own bombs, and a lot of that ha figures into a lot of the things that go on in the early '60s. Uh, you know, even to this day, they haven't acknowledged that they have however many uh, nuclear weapons they have. Uh, but uh, Kennedy, another thing about Kennedy was he was against having, uh, letting the, the uh, Israel have the bomb and allowing them to have the bomb. And they were just going ahead to have the bomb anyway. And so he was, you know, he was being unfriendly. And of course, then he ends up dead. And then we have Johnson coming in who does all the things that, uh, that he does. And, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> uh, there are questions about the Kennedy assassination too, as we all know, so we don't really know what went on there. So we don't know, and there's, when you don't know and you haven't been told, and they don't release the files and give us a reasonable story about things, naturally we go, uh, oh, what, this seems kind of suspicious, and, and you got all this out of doing that? Like, you know, uh, oh, so when the bomb, when Israel is trying to get the bomb and, and to, uh, to battle against uh, Kennedy is when uh, AIPAC was set up, the American uh, Israel um, Partnership uh, Association or whatever it is, uh, which was an Israeli outfit that, that since has been giving all this money to politicians, manipulating everything. Uh, basically controlling the U.S. government, how we let this, this, <laughs> this government that we've been funding end up controlling the U.S. government is, is incredible. And now we're just keep sending them more weapons and uh, 
Netanyahu, who uh, feels like he has the right to get on, uh, you know, get on TV and say, "Oh, you're not sending us enough stuff. You're, you're, you're uh, you know, you're anti-Semitic. You know, whatever." And uh, it's just really a, a lot of crap and uh, very distressing. And it's distressing to read stuff like that, uh, like this, to be to realize what a bad place uh, the USA is in for, uh, for, for the, what's gone on since the last half of the 20th century by uh, giving the CIA all this power, creating the CIA and giving them all this power and the Six Day War being basically, as it says in here, a, uh, a, a war that was designed by intelligence agents. And uh, that's basically who, who determines where we go to war these days, not Congress, not the people, not your voting, uh, but in, you know, the intelligence services and the military industrial complex. So um, I guess that's enough I have to say about this inadequate as it was.